back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. I am here with the man, the legend, Peter McCormick. Runner, uh, founder of the podcast What Bitcoin Did. What Bitcoin Did, man. How you doing? Good, man. Appreciate you uh, answering some questions with us. Anytime, man. Uh, All right. First question, name of the event. Bitcoin is what to you? Oh, man. See, that's the thing. It's so many things, right? But uh, I, if I had to like crystallize it, I would, I would be like, Bitcoin is um, opportunity. Okay? Bitcoin is like, because it just it enables you to do things you couldn't do before, right? So for me, well, firstly, for me, it's changed my fucking life, right? Like, <laughs> and I get to travel the world and do um, uh, these interviews and meet all these amazing people. But also, it gave me the opportunity. Look, when my mum was dying of cancer, I wanted to buy her cannabis oil. Couldn't get it in the UK, it was illegal. Went on the dark web, bought some with Bitcoin. So it just opens up doors for you to do other things you couldn't do before. Now I'm running a business. I invoice clients in Bitcoin. I get paid in Bitcoin. I circumvent the bank. So it just, it's opportunity to do things different. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I am here with the man, the legend, Jimmy Song himself. Jimmy, how are you doing today? I am doing great. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of people here. It's probably not your typical Bitcoin crowd, so I'm pretty excited. Really? You think it's not the... I, you go to a lot of conferences. Is it not the typical crowd? Well, I mean, the VIP seem kind of typical, but I, I suspect that there will be more people that aren't, you know... I, I, I don't know. I, I, I at least saw Russell and Spencer Dinwiddle, so that, we, that's... We, we're accepting everybody. Everybody yeah. comes here for a chance to learn. But yeah. Uh, yeah. anyway, so I'm a big fan of Jimmy uh, when he goes on the uh, Tone Vase podcast, so I'm happy to be asking him these questions. Um, Bitcoin is... Let's start general. Okay. Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is decentralized digital scarce money. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how I've seen it. And, uh, it allow, uh, and there's a lot of implications off of that, but the main one is that it allows people to save without having their wealth taken away from them. Yeah. I am here with crypto enthusiast, Bitcoin investor, Carol. Yes. How are you doing today? Great. Great. And what turned you on to this event, Bitcoin Is? Uh, my wife is part of it. Oh, really? Uh, Who? She's from an organization called The Rabbitho. Okay. And uh, they're a women-empowered blockchain uh, community and she's here on behalf of them today. And I have a piece of art that I'm trying to collect signatures for. Ooh, finish this sentence if you would. Bitcoin is? Fine art. What was it? Fine art. Fine art. Right, in this particular case, this uh, rendition of one Bitcoin is backed up by a piece of fine art. And does that have a private, does that have a, a public address? To, is that actually to, or it's just art? Uh, you can, uh, there are tokens of this made already, some tokens that were made, but when this is done, this will become an NFT, a 3D version of it, uh, like the crypto bobbleheads the Dodgers put out. Yeah. You'll be able to see the front, you'll be able to see the back, you'll see the edges, you'll see all the sides of this, okay? And you'll see the story that's written here. I well, like it. Once that's all done, we're going to strike 21 million of these as tokens, as ERC 1155s currently. Okay. The, the standard may change by the time we get to that, but for now, this will be struck in 1155 version. And what will the token be called? Uh, the Bitcoin Art Token. B A T. Maybe. Bat. Something like that. I think it's taken. But very cool. The Let Bitcoin Art Token. So, first interview of the day, this guy's setting the bar high. Uh, question, Bitcoin is? Bitcoin is sovereignty. Sovereignty, what yeah. do you mean? Bitcoin is the ability for you to take control over your finances in a way that in, a modern, in the modern age of digital banking will not be possible, especially when we move towards completely cashless societies. Um, so, for me, you know, this is why I love use cases in places like, you know, Venezuela or like in Iran where there was recently a cryptocurrency fundraiser because all, all of the, uh, the, all of the, you know, um, uh, humanitarian societies have had their international bank accounts shut down. So they've been relying on things like Bitcoin, some of these fundraisers. Um, and that's what I think it's all about. It's about divorcing monetary policy from the state. 
appreciate that. That was a thoughtful answer. I would have said revolution, but kind of I the mean, same thing. I mean, similar. I think, I think definitely kind of in line with each other. You know, like, you can't have the kind of, like, this is a monetary revolution. It's one that's going to end up, and if people decide to do it, to have complete sovereignty over their own finances in a way they haven't been able to before. Right, right. Except with maybe something like gold, you know, but... Right. But this is better. Yeah. I mean, I think so, but I'm a millennial, so, you <laughs> yeah, know... Exactly. Uh, Post Malone, you guys know. No, what was that second question? <laughs> All right, we are back with my friend, everybody's friend, Anthony Pompliano. Anthony, how are you doing today? Doing well, thanks for having me. Of course. What do you prefer, Anthony, Pomp, Tony? Uh, I joke with everyone and say I couldn't lose the Pomp nickname if I tried at this point. Right, it's a brand by now. It, it, it's something. <laughs> right. Cool, cool. So we come to you for big picture type questions and also just the real the real facts. I think a lot of people look to you, they appreciate your opinion. So hoping you can help me answer a couple questions. Um, let's start off general. Bitcoin is? It's a lot of things. Um, I, I think Bitcoin is just a way to uh, peacefully protest the issues that are wrong with the uh, legacy financial system. Right, right. Um, oh, look at this guy. Long Bitcoin short the bankers. <laughs> All right, who was that? Travis Kling. Oh, of course. Um, uh, what do you think in the uh, short to medium term is um, the, the biggest misconception, whether you're a new person or have been in the space a while, what's the biggest misconception when it comes to Bitcoin? Uh, I think a lot of people don't understand uh, why it's important or how it works as much as they look at it as a uh, uh, kind of get rich quick scheme, right? So it's very volatile. There's a price associated with it. Um, it's somewhat like a casino to them. Um, and so there's a uh, function for that. Price brings people in. Um, but I think that the people who stay and understand exactly what it uh, does, why it's important, how it, um, again, can just uh, peacefully protest what goes on in the financial system, I think that they end up, uh, you know, proven to stick around for a long period of time. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm here with Dan Held. I know him. I'm a big fan of your perspective on the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space long term. But for, the, for our audience who doesn't know you, would you just give a short little bio? of? Sure. Uh, so my name is Dan Held. I've been in this space for around seven years now. And uh, started out really early uh, back in 2012, 2013, building one of the first mobile products in this space. So that product was called ZeroBlock. That got bought by blockchain.com. I came on board there as the first product manager in late 2013. Uh, from there, went and I worked at uh, Uber, so I was on Rider Growth. After that, I co-founded a company called Interchange, which did trade reconciliation for crypto trading infrastructure, and we just got bought by Kraken about nice. a month and a half ago, so now I'm Director of Business Development at Kraken. Just that? I'm just kidding, that was... <laughs> It's a, sorry, it's a, it's a mouthful. It's seven years worth of, uh, of progress. So. And that's why we come to you, because you have a little more perspective than the average person. So, first question. Bitcoin is what? How would you finish that sentence? That's a great question, especially here at the Bitcoin News Conference. Exactly. Uh, I would say Bitcoin is a sound money created independently from governments. It's a, it's a freedom money. Uh, it essentially enables people to be free from any sort of control or manipulation by more powerful adversaries. Truth. Um, first off, since we're at this event, would you please finish the sentence, Bitcoin is the future? And elaborate. Uh, you know, it's a whole new system for the world to run its monetary system on, which is like underlies everything else we do. Uh, if we can't, uh, you know, pay each other, if we can't trust the system that like keeps an account of what everybody has, then you can't do anything else. And you see this anywhere a monetary system collapses, like the typical example of Venezuela, but there, you can go Wikipedia, if there's like hundreds of countries that this has happened to over the, over the centuries. Uh, they collapse because their monetary system collapses and then society collapses. Um, so Bitcoin's trying to say, like, let's have a monetary system that doesn't collapse anymore because it's not controlled by one or two rich people or a handful of politicians. It's controlled by an algorithm. It's powered by the citizens and the people of the world. Uh, so it's the new world. It's the future. All right. Welcome back, everybody. I am here with one of our speakers today at Bitcoin is Kelly, unnamed, last name unknown. Um, but Kelly, um, would you just explain to our audience sort of your background in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and what your interests are? Sure. Um, oh, you want to hold it? Oh, 
<laughs> That's fine. I hear, I hear never give up the mic. Okay, okay. So um, I had a long career on Wall Street. I was there, actually not that long, seven years, um, but it felt like 30 years. Um, I worked in financial institutions across banks, insurance companies, financial technology companies, in investing, M&A, strategy, corporate development, really kind of like everything you could do in understanding how financial companies work. Um, and it's just, it's just a super old school way of thinking, even the way that I was operating day to day. And I was honestly just looking for something that was so radically different from traditional finance that that's why I thought that Bitcoin was interesting. And that's how I found my way to CASA. Interesting. And maybe finish the sentence for us. Bitcoin is what to you? Bitcoin is the opportunity for more people to have more freedom and more power. I like that. Two more questions. Do it.